This time on the show, Kevin Mitnick is in the house with his missile whistle to answer questions from us and you. Then preventing file clobbering with Miss Taiwaka's all that and more, this time on Hack 5. This segment of Hack 5 is brought to you by Domain.com. Hello, welcome to Hack 5. My name is Darren Kitchen. I'm Shannon Morris. Your weekly dose of Technolust. I am so excited this week. Why are you excited? Because we have an awesome guest in studio with us. Kevin Mitnick is joining us. Really the missile whistle? Shut up. It was funny. Come okay. on, it was funny. I, know, I like it. I like it. It's like it's like casting magic missiles. The missile whistle. <laughs> <laughs> Suddenly, I want to play D and D. Anyway, but yeah. Sky so you're excited because uh, I, I got to say, I was watching the interview. I really enjoyed it thoroughly. Thank you. Yes, you, I enjoyed it too. It got like mad XP. I mean, the book was up. awesome. So I was really excited to discuss discuss it with him. But. And if you're totally missing out on that and you don't know who Kevin Mitnick is, you're about to find Just stay out. Stay tuned. Yeah. If you know and you're a hater, that's cool. This one's not your episode. But otherwise, I'm really stoked because I am you know I grew up <laughs> in the phone freaking scene and. That's really cool. So I hear we have a gift. We do have a gift. A gift from a fan. Or as we know it as the new Can What's in the Box okay. segment. Yeah, go ahead. Okay. Yay. All right. Have you seen what's in here? Yeah, I have. I haven't seen it. This is a gift for all of us from our friends in Ireland. Aoife and Rob, otherwise known as Archiver. Oh my god. And yeah, we got Cadbury chocolates. Oh. There's one for Paul. And there's one for me, and there's one for you, and Jason Applebaum's back there, and he's looking at this one. I, I, we're gonna have to save this for Kirby, so I'll take Yum. both of these. Kirby can't eat chocolate. Oh, Don't you right. dare give actually, her chocolate, I'll hurt you. Are not supposed to do that? No. Oh, okay. Don't give cats chocolate, that's a Thank big no-no. Thank you, Archiver. Oh my God. Thank you, Yifa. I am so excited. You know what? Just, let's cancel the episode. I gotta go eat this. this All right, well then we'll make it a quick A block. And um, <laughs> go ahead and uh, throw to Shannon with her wonderful Sorry. interview with Kevin Metnick, and we'll see you guys at the end of the show, and hopefully she won't have eaten all the chocolate and be like, Bleh! Today I am so excited to have Kevin Mitnick in the studio. Now, Kevin, you are known as the world's greatest, most wanted hacker. So I have a question. Okay. Can you really hack NORAD and fire off missiles? Well, you know, you know the old adage, if I told you that I have to kill you, but oh. I don't want to do that. Oh. But don't I, do that. <laughs> I, I, I've been practicing, and oh, uh, I understand you guys might play the secret whistling codes we at the might. end of your show. We might. Uh, okay, I mean, I mean, <laughs> you, you, really, you might want to keep it a secret because you okay. don't want to give it to all the guys out there. They might oh, of course, you know, launch right. missiles or something. Right, that would yeah, be Yeah, but bad. that's true. I ended up in solitary confinement for eight months because what had happened, at, at one point I was arrested and I ended up in court, mm -hmm. and uh, I figured I was gonna get out on bail. My, my right. family was there. And then the prosecutor starts telling the judge, not only do we have to detain Mr. Mitnick, but we have to make sure he can't get access to a telephone. <laughs> because if he does, your honor, he can pick up the phone, call NORAD, right. <laughs> whistle the tones, and possibly launch a nuclear oh weapon. Oh my gosh, that's hilarious. And when this guy said it, I laughed in open court. Well, yeah. Because it's so, it's so ridiculous. But the judge... Was NORAD even like online through the telephones at that time? I have no idea. I never looked. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Who knows? But mm. um, so the judge actually made an order that they had to ensure that when I was detained yeah. that I didn't have access to a phone. So the only place they could put me was, was solitary. solitary. That was for eight and a half long months. That's horrible. I mean, yeah. you're not the kind of person I would I wouldn't generally think of seeing in solitary No, it's usually like if you kill a prison guard, kill yeah, another inmate, yeah, you know, you're the Mexican mafia. <laughs> I don't think you're mafia, right? No. Okay. So, Kevin, you have wrote this book called Ghost in the Wires. Correct. Um, I've read it and I thought it was incredibly awesome. It's like oh, a sci-fi so thriller. Thank like you so a, much. Like a real life R.L. Neal Stevenson book <laughs> almost. But um, for anybody that hasn't read it, what's it about? Well, it's kind of about me and my adventures as a hacker. Yeah. Um, from when I was a 12 year old, my first hack was like hacking the bus system in Los Angeles. Yes. And that's awesome. You know, there's no you a lot of money. Yeah, it was no computers at the time. And I remember as a young kid, I was riding on the back of the bus. And in Los Angeles at the time, they would give you a transfer if you paid an extra dime. Right. And it was this piece of paper and it had uh, the, the driver punched holes. You no know, meaning like what bus line you are, what, yeah, yeah. what direction you're going. But it was a special punch. Every bus driver had like unique shapes. 
Not like when you go to the car wash and you yeah. got for 10, that oh, type yeah. of thing. I have so many rewards codes mm. for all the shopping that I do. Uh, Trust all me, the yogurts, I know about all the, all the, whole all the car washes. Yeah. <laughs> so as I'm, I was leaving the bus that day uh, and I, I, I walked by the driver. I go, hey, sir. And he goes, yes, I'm 12. Yeah. And I go, I'm working on this project in school and we have and to believe you. <laughs> punch these special shapes on cardboard. And that punch is really cool. Where do you guys buy them? Right. What kind of project would a 12 year old be doing? I don't know. I made it up on the fly, right? Because I wanted to get the answer. I wasn't going to say, hey. But you're I... totally innocent, so he believed you. He believed me, told right. me the name of the store. I borrowed 15 bucks from my mom, and I go get the punch. But then the problem was, is where do you get the transfers? Mm -hmm. So as a kid, I was thinking, after these guys drive a bus for eight hours a day, they're probably not going to clean the bus. Right. Probably some maintenance guy's going to do it. They're going to throw everything mm -hmm. in the garbage. So, so I rode them. my bike over to the bus depot. Yeah. And this is my first experience with dumpster diving. And it was out in the public area and I climb over the, the dumpster and I pull myself over and it was like a jackpot. It was all oh. these discarded books of transfers. That's awesome. And so I was riding around <laughs> Los Angeles for free and I had no idea what I was doing was wrong because even when other people were waiting at the bus stop, yeah. I'd say, hey, I can punch you a transfer. And I used to punch transfers for people just oh, sitting at the well, bus that's, stop. That's very good heart of, of you to yeah, do that. Yeah, I mean, that's it was so a good nice. spirit. Yes, yeah. yeah, a good Samaritan. So you ended up going to jail for things that people thought you had done and, and going through a ton of court and you even ended up in solitary confinement at one point. So yeah. um, that sounds like it'd be really hard to share with the world. So why did you write the book? Well, I, a lot of people really didn't know my story. There were three books written about me, The Fugitive Game, Take Down, yeah. The Cyber Thief and The Samarat. And they all got it wrong. You know, they pretty mm -hmm. much, you know, interviewed the police, yeah. interviewed people that were like former friends of mine that made up stories like the NORAD story, for yes. example. <laughs> and I thought it would be great to get out my story because it was so interesting. And I spent my life kind of as a hacker and I wanted to get the true story out. That's really That's the reason. And yeah. they made a motion picture about me that wasn't true called Take Down. And not I only was, the movie, movie sucked. I kind of want to see it just to, just to laugh at it. <laughs> it's funny because I'm friends with one actress and one actor that played in, in, in oh, the movie are? in real cool. life now, Donald Logue and uh, Angie Featherstone. Mm -hmm. and, um, but the movie was just like horrid. I mean, uh, what ended up happening is I was in jail and, oh. I nego and my attorneys negotiated with the motion picture company, Miramax and Dimension mm -hmm. Films to do script changes and all this other stuff and paid me a financial settlement because it was libel. So they didn't really talk to you about the script or anything? When no, you were up with it? they never oh, talked man. to me. They took it mostly from the book Take Town, which was untrue as well. Yeah, oh, that's yeah. terrible. <laughs> yeah, so how would you like that? You wake up one day and somebody's making a movie about yeah. you that's not hey, true, right? Hey, oh, that looks awesome, but no, you got that part wrong. Yeah, yeah. So there were a whole lot of security flaws for a lot of corporates, uh, a lot of companies that you had to write about in here. Did you run into any kind of problems with those companies when you were writing the book? No, because really? they, they don't know about the book until they go read it. I mean, everything is 100% true. Yeah. So I disclosed real names and real companies. Mm -hmm. And there's no defamation in the book. So as wow. long as it's true and it's not under any type of protective order, I could write about it. That's really surprising. I, I would have thought you had to go through a whole lot of, lot of like legalities to no. be able to write some of the things in there. I had to go through more legalities on using pictures. Like if it's- Seriously? If I, yeah, like- the, if, the pictures that yeah. are located in the middle? Oh yeah. Like wow. people that, where the pictures Please. were, yeah, where the pictures were uh, taken by another party, mm -hmm. I had to get releases, you know, signed releases, and I had to wow. go through a lot of trouble because in some of those pictures, I didn't know who, who took them. Yeah. Like there was one of a guy named Justin Peterson, who oh, was a government right. informant against me. And uh, that was Eric. Eric, Eric Hines. Hines, yes. And he was at SummerCon, and somebody else snapped the photo. So I found out who it was. Where was that picture? Right. Um, there this, it is. This one. Yeah. <laughs> I found out who it was, and uh, it took um, like such a, a surfer. long time. <laughs> and especially the one on screensavers when oh, I got yeah. off. Supervised release. They did a show, and I had to go because screensavers went, you know, to different companies. So right. I had to go to like to Comcast and trying to get them to legally release a picture is like, you know, buying How a house. Weird. Yeah. So was there anything that you couldn't write about the book in the book, yes. or any kind of like attacks that you wanted to talk about that you? Yeah, didn't I couldn't include? write about stuff that's under protective order because, okay. as part of my case, the judge, because the government wanted it, mm -hmm. uh, put a protective order on stuff of stuff oh. I couldn't talk about. But there was other hacks because 
what actually happened is this book is 400 pages. Mm -hmm. I went way over word count. The book yeah. was only supposed to be 250 to 300. Really? And my publisher was going to uh, require me to take out a lot of this stuff, but they read it and loved it. Personally, I'm glad you included everything because yeah. it's like, interesting. One cool story is one of my social engineering, one of my favorite ones, is this is like, you know, rewind back to like 1984. Okay. And I was in Digital Equipment Corporation's network. And it, their I network. Even bored. <laughs> <laughs> that's scary. I'm old. And their network was like my Disneyland, right? And I wanted to be able to sniff packets on yeah. this protocol called DeckNet. Okay. And so this one company in the San Fernando Valley where I actually lived developed a monitor sniffer tool for DeckNet. Okay. So I wanted to get a copy. And so I found out these guys ran their business. Out of, a, out of a residence. It was like two guys and they had a VAX computer and I was thinking, well, how can I hack into it? Because when I dialed, well, I got the dial-up number and when I dialed up, it asked for a system password. So there's no way I'm yeah. going to be able to con them that way. Yeah. So what I did is I got an update tape from DEC, repackaged it up, put, my, put a, basically a Trojan on the update tape, oh. repackaged it up, shrink wrapped it, put it in this box, and then I got a UPS uniform from a Hollywood uh, shop. Oh yeah, those are so easy to those find. Those are so easy. Hat, <laughs> uniform, clipboard, and around seven in the morning, I knock on the door. The guy answers. He's. I woke him up, which was intentional. Yeah. And I said, "UPS, I have a delivery from Digital Corporation. Can you please sign?" <laughs> and I'm pushing awesome. myself into the door. Yeah. And the reason why is, what do you think I didn't have that would give me away? Um, an ID. UPS truck. Oh, UPS truck. Right, no truck. Oh. Right. So it took about seven to ten days. Well, you didn't buy a truck. No, no, I couldn't afford it on my 18, <laughs> it was like 18, 19 years old. Yeah. So, so what happened is eventually about after like a week, 10 days, they installed the update and I got in. But uh, oh, that was kind of cool crazy. because it was like, it was physical, you yeah. know, and it was, it was kind of like James Bondish to me. It was Ooh. kind of like, you know, you know, could I really pull it off? Ooh, that, yeah. sounds, that sounds actually really fun. So were you wor worried about writing any of the different exploits that in you included No, I had here? to take down a lot of the technical exploits out. Oh, okay. And the reason being is we wanted the book to be available to the general public. I noticed yeah. that. Yeah, you made it really easy to understand a lot of the more technical hacking aspects that you included in it. Yeah, like the like legacy hacks like with .rhosts, yes. yeah. which doesn't really exist these days. But, you know, that I was able to explain and then I had different attacks because as it worked out, when one attack really works well, you just use it multiple times against right. multiple targets. Yeah, right. So works. if you have a zero day in Windows RPC or in you know Apache or IIS, yeah. you're not going to sit there and try to use a different exploit for each target. You're going to use the same yeah, one over course. and over and over. So in a lot of the stories, I use them differently. Right, oh, okay. and and then I illustrate it, and it becomes f a fun read. Yeah, it because does. it was the cl you know calling up somebody over the phone, pretending to be the help desk saying that somebody reported a problem creating files with a period. Yeah. Oh. And then this guy, this, I this engineer, <laughs> I goes, I, I said, did you report it? You know, and, and no, but can we try it out? And I said, do you have a .r host file? And the guy goes, no, like, what's no, that? What's, yeah. <laughs> I said, okay, let's try creating one. So I have him create the file, well, you know, so and it basically it. <laughs> allows me into a system. And I said, okay, it, it works. So I'm going to cancel the trouble ticket. Now you can remove the file. The guy's That's clueless awesome. and I got into his box. I mean, so it was all these different types of ways of using social engineering yeah. and technical hacks to get in. Wow. Yeah. That's great. Now, speaking of people that you might have social engineered, and same with the people that might have accused you of things, did you worry about any of the people that you had written about in the book? Like, did they, did any of them confront you or anything well, like that? Well, one did. I was working for this lady named Elaine Hill at a law firm, her home, Roberts and & Owen, and this is when I was a fugitive in Denver. Yeah, and she was one of my that. bosses, right? <laughs> so she wrote me on LinkedIn. She goes, oh, hi, Eric slash Kevin, because I was under the name Eric Weiss, oh, the real name for Harry Houdini right. at the time. <laughs> and she goes, my husband is loving your book. And by the way, because I characterized her mm -hmm. as a school teacher personality, yeah. right? And she goes, you're not going to believe what I do today. And she told me that she's, she's now a school teacher. teacher. So she goes, you got me right on. That's so cute. <laughs> yeah. So, so now that the book is out, um, did any of those people, because you had a lot of people that had lied to get you in trouble. Did any of them come up to you and say, hey, I'm sorry for saying no. that when they saw this book come out? No. Really? Not at all. No, no, none of my past. I would have. My, my, cool. my past uh, 
hacking partner who was, you know, hacking with me for a number of years yeah. and was Louis DePain. Mm -hmm. And he's not happy about the book because um, I wrote that he cooperated with the government, but, you know, he wanted to clarify with me that he was cooperating after my sentencing, so it would have had no effect on me. So he mm -hmm. was not really in an informant. So oh, okay. he, was, he was kind of disappointed. Uh, that I wrote about him in that way, but I just try to be a hundred percent, you know, frank yeah. and, and honest, you know, with yeah, the you're book. Just, you're... Domain Domain.com is owning the competition with cheap domain names and hassle-free service. Our Hack5 fans are making Domain.com one of the fastest growing domain registrars in the world. And if you're setting up a website to show off your pictures of your cat, brag about your new boating skills, or do something business related, Domain.com is the best place to buy a domain name for your new idea. Domain.com's easy checkout process makes it simple to find your domain name and set up your website without hassles. Domain.com's domain discovery system quickly shows you available names, making it easy to select the domain extension that's right for you. Find a suite.com or get a .co and save a character. Already have a domain somewhere else? It's cool. Transfer it to Domain.com for only $7.61 and get an extra year free. The guys at Domain.com are huge fans of Hack5 and they want to hook up other Hack5 fans. Use the coupon code HAK5 and get 15% off your next domain purchase or transfer. It's only $6.47 for transfers. Don't forget, when you think domain names, think Domain.com.